Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mark Henry. I am a senior engineer with Optimantics North American office located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today we're going to talk about how to leverage Optimantics solutions to manage your IT lifecycle from cradle to grave. So a bit of uh, light duty housekeeping before we get started today's webinar. Uh, we are recording the webinar obviously, uh, that way we can send along uh, links to the recordings. Uh, we'll make those recordings available both on uh, go to webinars website, but also on YouTube, and also from the uh, learning uh, section of the obmantic.com website. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to submit them uh, during the seminar. No problem at all. We have people watching uh, the go to webinar panels, so feel free to use either the chat window or the questions panel, uh, depending on which version of go to webinar you're using, uh, and submit a question, and we'll uh, we'll address it during the webinar itself. Finally, uh, when you do leave the webinar, if you leave early or if you wait till the end and we close down the webinar, uh, you'll be presented with a very short survey. It's only three questions. We ask you how you liked uh, this seminar, uh, how you liked the speaker, and then uh, we ask for any recommendations or thoughts on uh, future uh, future webinars. Please take a moment and complete the survey. Uh, we really we drive our topic uh, selections by your feedback. And of course, I can't get better at, uh, at presenting these types of webinars if I don't hear your feedback. So that being, uh, that being said, let's uh, go ahead and uh, start in on today's topic. So really, we're gonna be looking into uh, three big picture pieces today. The first is understanding Optimantic's suite of tools, how the tools work together and how they help deliver, uh, both on the ITSM uh, maturity model but also how they'll help support all of your workflows, whether you're a small business or a service provider, um, how the solution can be configured to meet your needs. And finally, we're gonna to touch briefly on what's covered under Augmentic Support and Maintenance Plan. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's get into Augmentic suite of device discovery and network monitoring solutions. So really, uh, you know, before we dive into all the, the bits and pieces and the parts that fix things or, or address needs, let's talk about what really drives the need to have, whether it's a device discovery solution or a uh, performance default monitoring solution in place. And so uh, really at the end of the day, it, it all comes down to improving the overall network performance, right? The concept that uh, you have networks that are, are poorly designed or architected, uh, leads to congestion across the network. Uh, you have um, you know, interfaces with insufficient either bandwidth capacity uh, or, or poorly sized hardware uh, that just can't deal with uh, um, you know, usage growth over, the, over time. Uh, you also have to deal with things like poor cable selection, installation results um, that, uh, that cause high errors, uh, discards, uh, and slow data transfer. So uh, it's all of these types of, of performance issues, and, and again, this is just a really a small sampling that leads to looking for different types of solutions to help feed uh, the brain of the IT team, right? How do you get the, the engineers that are managing the network, the engineers that are managing the servers, how do you get them the information they need to make everything work, make everything uh, move forward and support all of their, uh, um, their internal clients or their external clients if they're an MSP? One of the ways we kind of track how those types of things are done is by using the ITSM or IT Service Management Maturity Model. So the ITSM, and, and this was actually based on a, uh, on a Gartner uh, publication from several years ago, the ITSM breaks down operational maturity into five different levels, starting at level zero, all the way on the left-hand side of the screen, um, which is considered a, a very kind of chaotic maturity model. This is usually found in, in uh, small startup businesses, mom and pop companies. However, um, we've also seen it in a surprisingly rather large Fortune 1000 enterprises with um, thousands of devices and tens of thousands of employees. The ITSM progresses from level zero to level one, uh, which is considered reactive. Uh, so it's very much responding to information that they're provided from network monitoring tools, um, from, uh, from uh, inbound help desk tickets, from 
uh, employees calling in on the service line and saying, my service is down, I can't reach the internet, I can't boot my machine, whatever the problem is. All the way up to level two, which is more proactive, which is where the IT group is actually um, not just responding to problems that are coming into the organization, but are also reaching out, uh, monitoring how uh, how devices are working, how interfaces are working, they're analyzing trends, they're setting thresholds dynamically, and then they're also remediating problems proactively rather than waiting for things to, to break. On up to level three, which focuses more on uh, service and account management, and granted a lot of uh, uh, the ITSM maturity model level three uh, is really kind of process driven. Um, so it requires a lot of uh, written processes. It requires a lot of uh, due diligence, training of staff, training of salespeople, training of management on into level four, which also helps bring in not just uh, process changes internally to the IT department, but also uh, changes to the entire business, including how the IT department providing these services interacts with other departments, with their internal or external clients. So these five levels, um, all of Automatic's products marry and map into different pieces of these of these levels. As you stack Automatic's products together, whether it's our our device discovery and auditing platform, uh, Open Audit, or NMIS, which is our performance and fault monitoring uh, core solution, all the way up to tools like OP Config for configuration compliance, OP Flow for NetFlow and IP fix analysis. All of these pieces address specific features or requirements at each of these levels. And so as you start stacking Augmentic solutions together, and we'll touch on this in detail in a minute, you'll see that we start addressing different levels uh, or, or different feature requirements at each of these level points. Now, just because our solutions address the ITSM maturity model doesn't mean that your organization has to adopt that. In fact, uh, one of the things that we're gonna cover today is the concept that no matter what type of process you use internally, even if you just have it you know, jotted down on a whiteboard or a, a handful of post-it notes, and that's how you, you, know, you provide your services uh, to your business, our solutions can be configured uh, and set up to support that specific piece. So whether you're using the ITSM, the ITIL, um, COBIT, whether you're, uh, you have some homegrown process or some hybrid process, you can actually marry Opmantic solutions into those and address that and build out that process for you and automate a lot of the pieces of your own puzzle. So let's talk briefly about Opmantic solution and how our solution set works. So in the, uh, uh, in the ring of fire over on the right hand side, you'll see all of our current solution set broken up and grouped by uh, kind of key headings, right? So in the top right, it's auditing tools, things like Open Audit or OP Config. You also see it's scalability tools like OPHA. Uh, it's uh, performance and fault man monitoring with NMIS and uh, with OP Charts. It's visualization with OP Trend and OP Reports. And it's analysis with OP Events and OP Flow on up to discovery again with uh, OP Address and Open Audit. So each of these components um, uh, can work as kind of standalone solutions, uh, building off of uh, a common backend database and shared information. But truthfully, uh, as you start to group these again, each of them deliver specific features and functionality that build out and address the needs of your organization in order to move you up that, that uh, IT service management maturity model heading more out of a, a level zero or a level one where we actually find many of our clients on into a solid level two and even a level three. And then with some process changes, uh, solidly into a level four and even uh, you know, a level five for that. For those of you who are, are following along on the, uh, on the presentation, uh, if you're here in the webinar today, you can actually go to the handouts panel and go to webinar and download a PDF copy of today's presentation. Uh, it has uh, all of the slides, all of the content, and later on, all of the links for the references as well. Uh, if you're coming to this webinar uh, on YouTube or on Opmantic's website, or even on the, uh, uh, the GoToWebinar website, you can get the PDF version of this from Opmantic's website. Just go to opmantic.com, 
uh, look for learn in the menu uh, and then you can uh, select webinars from there and find this presentation and uh, and download the uh, the PDF of this as well so uh, talking about the IT service management maturity model how does uh, how does automatic solutions support those pieces you'll notice down the left hand side we have the list of all the pieces that fall within that Iraq, uh, that uh, reactive um, uh, section heading for level one operational process engineering uh, the one red bullet desktop software distribution is a section that Automatic doesn't touch uh, it's just not within our kind of our core discipline or solution set uh, there are plenty of products uh, both commercial and open source out on the market for managing uh, software distribution whether to windows machines uh, linux unix uh, esxi etc uh, and there are also plenty of DevOps scripts and processes uh, out in the marketplace as well. So it's just not something that Automatic uh, focuses our time on. That being said, if you start looking to things like being able to just respond reactory, right? Being able to fight fires, keep track of the inventories of your equipment, uh, initiate problem management, alert an event uh, on, uh, on events, and measure component availability, you can start very simply. Uh, with Augmentix NMIS, which is again our core performance and fault management solution, add in Open Audit, and then if you wanted to, if you wanted to expand on that and really solidly support Level One, uh, you would add in also OP Events, which provides you more of an executive event management capability, but more importantly, the ab the ability to respond to events uh, in, in a live way. So you can see an event like a node down and execute. Uh, a trace route, uh, execute a ping, gather the results of those troubleshooting pieces, store them with the event, make that information available to your help desk team as well. As you're progressing and you're moving through level one and into level two, uh, you would again, you'd start with uh, NMIS, open audit, OP events, OP reports, and then you would add in OP charts for a more uh, dynamic visualization of what's happening across your network. You might add in OP config for configuration compliance. And of course that uh, that deals with the mature problem configuration change asset and performance management process requirement of the proactive level. You'd also add in OP trend, which gives you analyzing trends and setting thresholds and also predicting problems. And then you might add in OP flow and OP address, which gives you kind of a, a basic IP address management solution with OP address. And also with OP flow, it gives you Netflix uh, or uh, IP fix rather and NetFlow uh, analysis. Depending on the size of your implementation, you might also add in OPHA, which is Automantic's high availability module. It allows you to connect polling servers together uh, along kind of a first level horizontal band and then have all those interconnect up with one or more master servers at a second level tier above it. And those master level servers could be local inside your organization or out in the cloud. As you start expanding and building out uh, Automantic solution and, and, build, and improving your own uh, value and quality of solutions that you deliver to your organization, you'll start moving into a, a level three or service and account management level, uh, which talks about IT as a service provider. Uh, it talks about guaranteeing SLAs, measuring and reporting service, av service availability, integrating processes and capacity management. Again, the two bullets on the left-hand side in red defining services, classes, and pricing, and understanding costs. Those two pieces are really manual processes. Uh, there are some uh, solutions out on the marketplace that help automate that through a question and answer, uh, and through a template process where you fill in information and then it provides uh, different types of reports that you can use. Those are, those are fine tools. Again, it's just not something that's really within uh, Augmentic's core uh, solution set. So when you're heading into level three with Automantic Solutions, what you're really doing is you're expanding on feature implementation. So you've already got performance of fault management, you've got high-end event management installed, you've got configuration and compliance, um, and you've got uh, custom, dashboards, custom dashboards in place. So when you're expanding on those feature implementation, you're adding things like a customer portal using uh, OP charts. So you're letting your customers come in and they can actually, where we say measure and report service availability, you're letting your customers come in and self-serve through a customer portal and see how well their, uh, you know, their ISP interfaces are working, how well their devices are working, how well their applications are working. 
Some of the other pieces that you'll be doing is you'll be converting from a traditional to a strategic knock. And again, this is more of a process change that Augmentic Solutions help uh, support. Uh, and we have some great, great examples and a couple of good webinars um, out on the learn section of the Opmantic portal that cover uh, all of these pieces under solutions. And then of course, you'll be revising your internal processes as well. It'll be everything from uh, you know, maturing your own internal processes, changing from that kind of post-it post note driven uh, process flow that you have to something that's uh, more documented, more regimented, more uh, that can be replicated. And that, that might follow something like an ITIL or an ITSM standard. Um, and so it's it's much more of a kind of a, a NIEEE uh, governance type solution. As your solution matures, uh, you'll be moving more into a, an ITSM uh, level four, managing IT as a business. So you'll be acting more as a strategic business partner rather than a break fix type solution shop, right? So when you if you remember back to that level zero. Uh, where you're a chaotic environment, or even the level one, where you're very much reactionary and putting out fires every day, you're moving from that kind of a break-fix mentality into much more of a strategic business partner. So whether your clients are internal or external, so whether you're servicing uh, lines of business internally uh, to your to your company, or whether you're acting as a managed service provider and you're providing services to third-party clients, you're becoming much more of a partner rather than just a, a vendor. Uh, you're linking much more IT to business metric linkages. So rather than considering and thinking about individual devices being down, you're looking at applications and services. You're talking about things like, are my SaaS applications up and running? Does my sales team have access to Salesforce? Are my Salesforce servers that are in the cloud, are they up and running? Um, can, my, uh, can my sales team log in and go to the... Um, uh, go to the opportunities page in Salesforce, for example. You're also looking at uh, more of a collaboration, right? So you're collaborating with your business partners, again, whether those are internal lines of business or external companies, you're collaborating with them, you're improving business processes overall. You have more of a real-time infrastructure mentality. So you're spinning up servers as needed. Those servers, of course, have to be added to your performance monitoring. You have to be able to monitor them. You should be able to audit them as well. And this all leads you to business planning, which comes down to trending and analysis, reporting, uh, you know, being able to uh, anticipate your needs in the future, not just dynamically uh, in real time. What do I need today for processing uh, capabilities? But what do I need in six months? What will I need in nine months? If uh, the merger and acquisition goes through, uh, what will happen after that? What, you know, where do we need to go to? What investments need to be made? And again, uh, the solutions from Automantic, you're continuing, you're adding more features again into the solutions you already have rolled out. And you're looking to convert your now strategic knock from a nine to five Monday through Friday uh, uh, staffing to a more dynamic 24 seven rollout. So a lot of our customers come to us and they ask us, well, we have we have our own we have our own workflow internally and it's it's been in place for years and it works and we get by with it and everybody likes it and we really don't want to have to retrain everybody and there's no time for training and you know can your solutions support X workflow whatever whatever X is and sometimes that's something that's very regimented that's very well defined and documented um, like uh, like the ITIL uh, service level management. Uh, process or again it could be something that's just internally defined that's very loosely defined that they, there's no documentation for so one of the key pieces that uh, that our development team and, and our product support team decided on many years ago was that Obandix solutions all of them whether it's the free and open source solutions like NMIS and open audit community or whether it's the commercial modules like uh, OP charts, uh, OP events, OP flow, et cetera, that all of them would be flexible enough to support whatever workflow the customer wanted to, to employ them in. So specifically, um, when you start looking at our different solutions, again, um, each of these generally can stand alone. 
Um, in many cases, uh, so for example, our event module can take uh, incoming events from NMIS, our performance default management. Uh, OP events can also take uh, incoming events from OP charts. It can parse out syslogs, it can handle less than MP traps. Uh, it can generate events and it can connect both north and southbound with various different types of uh, third-party solutions. So each of these pieces uh, on, the, on the wheel on the right can again, uh, in many cases, stand alone, work inter, uh, interrelationally with other automatic solutions, or be driven or drive uh, whatever third-party solutions you have in place now. But the nice things are uh, these can all be customized, right? In many cases, they can be customized by you um, just through the setup and configuration of each individual uh, product line. Uh, in many cases, you can add custom fields or metadata tags. You can filter on those fields. You can share those fields amongst uh, uh, almost all of the product line. So for example, you might wanna create a custom field like, um, like SLA and start that in NMIS. And so you would assign uh, your devices in NMIS, which is doing your uh, performance default management. You might assign them a, a gold, silver, or bronze SLA. So you can create that custom field. You can define the, the contents, the, the options that are in that. You can make that a drop-down list box. And then that can then be shared out to uh, OP charts where you could filter on that and say, I just wanna see devices that are of a gold SLA, or it might help drive the rules in OP events. You might say, uh, if I have a device down, which is a gold SLA, uh, escalate that immediately to the uh, on-call manager. So you can create custom fields or metadata tags. You can share them throughout many different products. You can filter on them and you can use them to drive business logic decisions as well behind the scenes on how the uh, how the solution works. Uh, the user interface or GUI uh, through almost all of our products can be modified through uh, configuration options. So that's uh, configuration files. You can add or remove fields from different screens. You can show or hide screens. You can change which screens filter on uh, different things like priorities or different types of customers or customers that are marked as VIPs etc. So most of that can be done through either configuration options or through templates. Uh, whatever can't be done through that, we're all uh, driven by HTML5. And so we have a very well-defined uh, cascading style sheet as well. And so you can always customize the CSS files if you want to go to that point to be able to absorb your own uh, custom templates, look and feel and layout and things along that line. And of course, all of our modules support RESTful APIs. So you can create any kind of north or southbound integration you want. You can push data in so you can enrich Augmentic solutions with information from other, uh, other third-party apps you have, or you can take information from our solutions and push that out. So for example, um, you might drive the addition, uh, the modification and the retirement of devices in NMIS from a CMDB, right? So you might be using something like ServiceNow and you want to pull devices from ServiceNow, add them to NMIS for live device monitoring, uh, and then you might want to, uh, when an event occurs, you want, might want to push that event back into ServiceNow or into something like ConnectWise. Um, you might want to use Open Audit as your uh, device discovery solution and then push the devices that are found into ServiceNow. So there's lots of different options that are available, many different things that you could do. You could drive data into uh, a business intelligence unit, uh, into a, an AI solution if you want to do uh, high-end AI analysis um, or trending of, of performance. So lots of different things that can be done. Uh, it really just comes down to sitting down and brainstorming what your challenges are and then coming up with different ways to, uh, to address those pieces. So that being said, uh, let's just take a, a quick look at a couple of different options on workflows and how they might be supported. So, for example, this is the IT asset lifecycle. Um, uh, some people call it the basic IT asset lifecycle. Um, it's often seen in smaller businesses, right? But frankly, uh, I've seen this uh, straightforward uh, kind of lifecycle process be applied very, very well at really large enterprises. So enterprises up to uh, a Fortune 1000, maybe even a Fortune uh, 500 level. Um, where you can still accurately provide all of the services and support uh, and you have a strongly uh, enough defined process uh, that everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, 
But if we take a look in with the concept of uh, device procurement being in the center of this process, so device procurement and even deployment, discovery and auditing are all serviced by Open Audit. Uh, when it comes to audit and compliance, kind of going clockwise around that outer circle. Um, if you're looking at audit and compliance, those are serviced by Open Audit and OP Config. Uh, when it comes to performance monitoring, you're looking at NMIS and optionally uh, OP Charts, OP Events, and OP Flow. Again, depending on how large an organization you are or how important it is for you to uh, have high-end dashboards and charts, keep track of uh, service availability, or do event response or if you need to keep track of NetFlow and IP fix. Coming around uh, clockwise again to maintenance and support, uh, that can be serviced by uh, OP reports, OP trend, and OP events, and then retirement disposal, and we're back to, to open audit again. So open audit in this example, uh, acting as a central uh, content management database, or CMDB. So open audit will uh, help you keep track of your vendors, it'll help you keep track of uh, where your devices are, who's responsible for your devices, it can also do device discovery. It's an agentless solution. It can keep track of all your device inventory. And then you can pick and choose which devices that OP, uh, Open Audit is keeping track of to pass along to OP Config for configuration compliance work or onto NMIS for performance monitoring. So you can do subsets of those. And then of course, devices can be retired in Open Audit as well. Moving on into a more regimented process, so considering the concept of, of the ITIL 2011 process, there are actually 24 ITIL processes in the 2011 specification. Um, four of them speak specifically to performance management. Uh, over on the right-hand side, we've just given a quick flow chart here to uh, the service level management uh, flow, for example. Um, but the four ITIL processes that speak to performance management is the incident process, the availability process, capacity process, and service level management processes. So you can actually map in each of Automatic solutions into each of these pieces. Um, the ITIL processes are very well documented. Um, my recommendation is if you're an organization looking to move into ITIL, um, personally from an IT standpoint, I would start with these four processes. Uh, if you try to bite off and adopt all 24, um, not only will you never get them rolled out across your organization, um, the amount of time and money involved in getting your arms around those 24 processes um, can be can be detrimental to actually implementing them and, and getting somewhere with it, getting some kind of regimented structure around uh, your organization. But if you just start with these four processes, and again, Augmentic Solutions will support all four of these, uh, you can get very, very uh, far down the chain of implementing ITIL in your organization uh, and doing it affordably uh, using Automantic Solutions. Uh, we've only just touched on ITIL here. Uh, this has many more layers to it. We're going to be doing several blog posts over the next month or so. Um, so again, please come to Automantic.com, select Learn from the menu, and uh, you will be able to find several blog entries that will go uh, much more in depth onto the into these four ITIL processes, how Automantic Solutions uh, specifically address each of these solution points or process points and then how you can actually uh, use them much more granularly as part of your overall workflow. Um, so we'll have that available as well as more information on the ITSM, uh, so the IT service management maturity model and how Augmentic Solutions support that. Apologies for the incorrect header. Uh, this is actually Augmentic's product support. So uh, some of the high level pieces that are here. Uh, we often have questions from clients who ask us, you know, what, what kind of support do you offer? How easy is it, is it for us to get in touch with you? How fast do you respond, uh, et cetera? So um, some of the nice key things to, to consider when you're looking at different types of solutions, right? Uh, Augmentic offers um, subscription-based product support at no additional cost with our annual software licensing packages. So if you're licensing our commercial products uh, or if you want to purchase uh, support and maintenance on NMIS, we make that available. Uh, we staff regional support centers globally um, and these are not by call center folks. These are actually staffed by experienced engineers who are working in your local working hours. Now I can't guarantee that we have local language experts 
for everywhere around the globe. Well, we do have pretty good language coverage, um, you know, throughout all the uh, out all the territories that we're supporting. There's no limit to the number of cases you can open, and cases remain open until you confirm they're resolved. So it's up to you to confirm that we've satisfied your question. Uh, all of our product support also includes monthly software updates. Uh, we'll work and coordinate with your system administrators uh, and help your team actually schedule uh, system upgrades internally. And then, of course, we also support refresher training as well. So as product updates are released and new features come out, uh, happy to do customized uh, online web uh, delivered uh, training classes for your teams as well. Part of that all is uh, uh, release of bug fix fixes, access to updates and new versions of all licensed software. Uh, and of course, if you find a bug in the, in the solution, uh, we do have some uh, really nice tchotchkes that we send out to people who are bug hunters for us and who find bugs. And of course, all of our licensed customers, uh, everyone on, a, uh, on an annual support contract, um, their input directly influences our product roadmap. So all of our features and functionality are driven by client demand. And of course, one key piece as well, uh, we often make uh, pre-release software. So I'm not talking about beta releases, I'm talking about alpha releases of software. Uh, we're currently beta testing uh, NMIS 9, and we're getting ready to uh, move OP charts for NMIS 9 into beta testing as well. And so if you're on part of our, uh, our support and licensing package, then you'd have access to those types of uh, pre-release software. Uh, we had a question uh, from someone come in. He asked, can we customize and parse out config files? The answer is yes. So in OP config, OP config will actually pull configuration files from all your networking devices, however often you want it to do it. Um, it actually executes the, uh, the different types of command line CLI uh, commands based on the uh, manufacturer, model, and operating system of the device. Right? So different operating systems might have slightly different CLI commands that are available for it. So you can execute those and collect configurations, and then you can also uh, go back and, uh, and notify people. So taking a look at opconfig briefly. So for example, I have configuration changes coming down the left-hand side. So we might say show starting uh, startup config on this one device. We can see we've got different types of pieces here, and I'm going to scroll through this. Apologies if it's jittery on the screen share. You can see that we've got a change here. IP OSPF cost 9999 has been changed. I can actually see that in line. So the current revision versus the previous revision. And you can see new lines here on the right in green, the old remove line on the left in red. And we had a question, what about application config files? Yes, depending on the type of application, so uh, opconfig can actually be configured. You can create your own personalities, device personalities. So you could create a device personality for a specific, uh, let's say for a, a Windows 10 machine or a 2008 R2 server. Uh, and then as long as you can SSH or Telnet to that machine, uh, which are the two methods of connection that uh, opconfig uh, uh, supports currently, you could pull a config out. It depends on where the config exists. So if you're having, having to read uh, let's say the Windows registry and parse pieces out. You could do it, but it would take a little bit of brute force. Uh, our professional services team would be happy to help you out. So further questions on whether that can be done with Oracle and WebLogic. I don't see why not. Again, it just comes down to identifying where those configurations are stored, uh, how they're stored, and then what types of commands are available to access that information. But if you have more uh, specific questions on that, feel free to reach out to us at support at opmantic.com or connect, uh, or contact rather, contact at opmantic.com. So we do have some, uh, some internal references. Uh, again, uh, you know, don't try to copy these down uh, during the presentation, just grab the PDF uh, either from the GoToWebinar panel uh, or feel free to download it once it's uh, uploaded, uh, I would think, uh, within the next 24 hours to the opmantic.com learning portal. Uh, but uh, we have several internal references, so we have lots of really good uh, 
both blog and webinar entries that are available for you. Uh, and so they're short. We have short videos. We have long videos like this one. Uh, we have blogs as well if you'd prefer to read. We also have a good list of references available on our website for reporting and performance improvement. Um, at Lassian has a great section uh, that they use uh, to help drive both uh, um, the use of their JIRA uh, help desk product and Confluence as well, both of which we support wholeheartedly. And then of course, there's also the ITL News, the ITL News and the ITSM Watch. If you're interested in auditing and compliance, we strongly recommend the UC Berkeley Secure Device Configuration Guidelines uh, as a starting point. It's designed to be accessible for everyone as far as how the content's uh, documented there. Uh, if you need something more in depth, please check out the Center for Internet Security. Uh, their controls section and also their benchmarks are highly useful documents. It'll really help you understand how to uh, secure or how to configure and secure your network and then also how to do auditing and compliance against it as well. And then of course is also the uh, the NSA security configuration guidelines. Um, these uh, used to be on the NSA's website now they're hosted on the IAD. I do understand that many of them have been retired and removed from the IAD's website. So uh, if you uh, if you go to check, uh, don't be surprised if many of the things like the uh, NSA Cisco uh, guide to router configuration, for example, uh, is no longer available. Uh, finally, uh, we want to include some references on how to uh, build reports and queries and open audit. Many of these uh, link back simply to uh, MySQL or MariaDB's tutorials on how to do uh, SQL. And of course, again, we also have lots of good blogs that are available and a couple of great webinars to support you. So there was a question on, do we have documentation on our data model? It really depends on which product you're talking about. So Opmantic Solutions, when you're looking at Open Audit, Open Audit, of course, uh, uses both uh, My, MySQL or MariaDB, depending on your operating system, uh, as the back end. Uh, MySQL is a relational database. Uh, and so all the table structures are available. That's all well documented, both within Open Audit and also on the Open Audit Wiki itself. And uh, you can see the uh, the link to the wiki here. Um, NMIS itself uses a set of RRDs. Um, so that's a round robin database. Uh, that's very well uh, uh, documented as well on uh, Toby Odeker's website. And we have links to that available on ours. And if you have uh, any of our configuration compliance or any of our commercial modules, those are all using uh, a, big end, a big end database on the backside. Um, so it's mostly uh, blob type storage uh, and rather than a kind of a traditional relational database laid out. Well, that concludes today's uh, review of uh, managing your IT, uh, your IT lifecycle with, uh, with Automatic Solutions. If you have any questions, uh, my email is right on the screen. It's markh at opmantic.com. Feel free to reach out. That's also my cell phone number. Uh, again, you can reach me that way as well. And uh, uh, you know, please don't be surprised uh, or disgruntled if, uh, if I send you to voicemail and then give you a call back. I spend a lot of time uh, on the phone talking to people. So thank you all very much for your time today. Uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing you at another one of our webinars.